Steve Shortell mentioned that we have some problems in the U.S. healthcare system. And I think, as you all know, since the early Clinton administration, some of the best and brightest people in this country have been working on how do we fix the U.S. healthcare system. Hundreds of books have been written, thousands of papers have been published. There's probably a meeting in the United States every single day on the subject of health care reform. Yet if you really think about it, since that time, access to health care has gone down, costs have skyrocketed, the variability and the disparity across various parts of the country have increased, and the health care outcomes in this country are no better and sometimes worse than other countries in the developed world, even though we spend much more money on health care than any other country in the developed world. Twenty years earlier, a young researcher, uh, then young at the uh, University of Vermont, Jack Winberg, uh, noticed something very interesting, and he had an inkling of what the problem in our health care system might be. He noticed that two very similar cities in Vermont had radically different rates of tonsillectomy, even though the health outcomes in both those cities was about exactly the same. He concluded that maybe this is a bigger problem. And he started studying with his partners uh, more procedures in more parts of the country, eventually enveloping the entire country. This led, this study led to the Dartmouth Institute of Health Policy and Clinical Practice, which statistically studied this phenomena. It led to the Dartmouth Atlas of Healthcare which today is the Bible for many people doing research in what's right and what's wrong with health care. And it led to a very, very startling conclusion. Two conclusions. One is that we waste over $600 billion a year in this country on overuse, underuse, and misuse of evidence-based medical procedures. And second, the parts of the country which spend the most, have the highest rate of spending on health care, have no better health care than the lower cost regions, and in some cases have worse outcomes. More health care turns out to be worse health care. If we do eventually solve the health care problem in this country, I don't believe there's any lasting solution which cannot take account of that $600 billion and cannot use it for more productive purposes in public health, in ensuring more people, in preventive health care, in all the things that this School of Public Health stands for. It will be part of any reform, obviously. Jack Winberg has been a friend to me, an inspiration to me for many, many years, uh, but I'm not alone. I want to read to you portions of a letter sent by uh, Jim Weinstein, who succeeded Jack as uh, chair of the uh, Dartmouth Institute. Jack has genuinely changed my life's path and life's work. I am so grateful for his wisdom, mentorship, and friendship. But I am one of many who chose to chart their career choice because of Jack. The country is full of Winberg disciples. I am proud to be one of them. Well, I think there are probably thousands of Winberg disciples. You can't go to a meeting on health care reform without hearing the name Jack Winberg. So I am very pleased and honored tonight to be able to present the National Heroes Award to Jack Winberg. On your toe. Can you come out from behind? Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I'm a little speechless uh, not being used to being a hero, um, but uh, I have to really say how much I really do appreciate this award. Um, it comes at a time when this country of ours is in deep crisis, and I think that the kind of challenge that uh, uh, was laid out earlier today on the public health school's role in trying to deal with reform issues has a special message here in California. We have done a lot of studies showing extraordinary differences between the different communities served by the academic medical centers of the University of California with Sacramento and University of California and Davis actually using almost half, less than half the resources as are used 
in Los Angeles by their sister hospital. And I think the challenge, <laughs> I'm not sure who you're clapping for. <laughs> but, but let me say that the challenge to resolving these very interesting issues in both value and outcome uh, is a public health issue. Epidemiology, the skills taught in, in the schools of public health uh, have given me over the years the tools and the insight that I think has led to the kind of research which is very interesting. And uh, when I think about, Steve, your, your, your challenge here, which was one was chronic disease and healthcare delivery, uh, that the University of California uh, systems of healthcare could definitely use some input from the School of Public Health. And I, I hope you'll accept that challenge because uh, there's a lot of public good to be done in that. Speaking of, of, of the whole problem of medical errors, um, what we see is because the utilization rates for hospitals are virtually double in Los Angeles compared to Sacramento, we're seeing many more medical errors occurring there simply by virtue of the exposure to high risk hospitalization. So my recommendation uh, would be uh, to take that challenge and, 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 and begin to move in that direction. Uh, but that's not to, to, to diminish my thanks to you, uh, to the committee, to this honor, uh, which was quite unexpected. Thank you very much.